All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having an amazing and blessed day. Today, we're gonna be watching a supernatural testimony. So my friend Julian, he texted me this video. He said, yo, Nick, you gotta check this out. So I was like, all right, bet, let's check it out. I don't know anything about this uh, testimony, except for the title, obviously, which says, Smoking Tree, W-E-E-D, right? Seeing the devil and Jay-Z on my way to hell. So yeah, this is from uh, an individual on YouTube named Miles B. So if y'all wanna check out Miles B, I'll go ahead and link the, uh, the uh, original video down below in the description. And once again, I, I, I haven't watched this video. I have no idea what I'm walking into. All I know is the title, but yeah, let's get into it. I was 18 years old, because I wanna get right into it. I'm 34 now. I was 18, it was 2006. I was at Wayne State University and I was with a lot of bad influences. I didn't smoke weed, I didn't do any of those things, but once I turned 18, I started. And I started a lot. And things started happening to me as I would smoke weed. Um, so the first time we were all, it was me and a, a lot of friends, we were all in my uh, dorm room after we had smoked. And I had a computer in my, in my, um, in my room and we were, play music and it would just you know be loud it's on the weekend everybody could play the music and when it was playing while i was high i started to dance uncontrollably and i did not have say on what i would do it was like control of my body it was i was possessed and i was telling my friends because i was about to start crying i'm like yo i don't have control of my body i'm like hey cut the music off and you know they laughing and finally they cut the music off and i got control of my body again and so i thought you know i brushed it off like that was a, a crazy experience but we smoked again, and we're in my room again. And this time, my friend starts to, he starts to to dance, and he can't stop dancing. And he's saying, Miles, I know what you're talking about. Um, I can't stop dancing. He's like, cut the music off. And so I went and I cut the music off. Now, mind you, when we would dance, the people that were around us would become entranced. They would be, they would be so spellbound by what we by what we did because it wasn't us there was there was there was the presence of demons literal demons that were that were seducing spirits that would entrance people to where they could watch us dance for hours and i want to i want to emphasize that because it would take some time for me to finally get to say that i'm not in control it would take some time because when you're high you don't have a real good measure on the time everything seems like longer it's like slow motion it's like you go into the into the eternal realm and, and, and it's, you know, time is is relative. It can seem longer, shorter, but for some reason, time I smoke, it would seem like slow motion. Everything was slow motion. And so this last time we smoked, we decided to go over my my friend's apartment and they had like a bachelor pad. And I call this the straw that, that broke the candles back because they had two or three blunts and I, I would smoke a couple, uh, I would take a couple hits and I would be, I'll be done. But this particular time they had this big couch and a big screen TV, surround sound, it was a, a true bachelor pad. And they had two or three um, blunts and they, they rolled them around and I, I was I was done, I was stuck. And um, all of a sudden, my eyes went out of focus. They, they blurried and I, I couldn't see and then they focused when they when they refocused i had 20 20 vision and i wear glasses and i had 20 20 vision and i could zoom in and zoom out it was crazy and i looked down at the carpet and the carpet the carpet started swirling it started swirling and then it changed into this beautiful portrait i'm talking about it's something i haven't seen to this day it looked like it was like an ancient art or something like that and a voice came to my ear and said, you can draw this and you can be rich and famous. You can trace this. All you have to do is get high every day. Mm. And I was like, I'm tripping. Whatever, whatever this voice is, it made me deeply afraid because I haven't drawn or told anybody that I could draw. And that I have a love for drawing in such a long time that it made me understand that something has been studying me for a long time and has been waiting for the perfect opportunity to present this because it was a real temptation. It was a real temptation. 
that's the thing about that word is that it's not going to be something that you don't desire. And so I realized that I was like, whatever this is, I don't want no parts because what's the, what's the price? And so I'm still at the mercy of the marijuana because I can't move. My body's incapacitated. So I'm, I'm like stuck. And they put on this DVD and they were going to put Tupac Machiavelli. And I'm so glad they did. They didn't because uh, I've never watched it. But I don't know if I would have been able to handle it looking back. But they put on Jay-Z Fade to Black. And I had never seen that either. And so my eyes had blurried again, like right, right before they did that. And I told you I had 2020. They had blurred after the 2020. And when they focused again, it was like I went past the natural and I was able to see spiritual things. Like straight up, I could just, I could see spirits. It was, it was crazy. And when they put the fade to black on, I had knowledge about things that nobody ever taught me. And so he started off and the, and the camera was like, at, it was facing uh, the sky and it was talking about, you know, I got to do this show, you know, a night when the stars is aligned. And before I do that, I got to get everybody up to my level. And literally like audible voices and i was saying it out loud i was like that's witchcraft i was like wait how do i know that i was like whatever i'm tripping i'm high and this is my conversation to myself i looked around to see if people you know were looking at me like i'm crazy because i'm talking to myself and so i'm conscious enough to know that what i'm seeing is not normal but i'm still high and so the dvd of jay-z fade to black consists of him showing his performance at madison square garden about his retirement with the black album is his retirement album and it was showing the process of him making the, the, the album, Fade to Black. And so when the camera showed Jay-Z, he had a snake inside of him. I'm talking about, it was like about this, it was like this big and the snake was colorful and it wasn't, it wasn't saying anything or doing anything, but it was just, he was walking around and I could see the snake inside of him and the, and the tail, the tail was moving a little bit. It was like swaying like this. And he was, you could see him like, you know, seeing fast forward, you can see him going like this through songs. He's trying to find the right song. He's um, narrating on the, on, the, on the DVD saying, you know, you got to find the right song. He said, if you get the right artist with the right song and you crack the door open, he said, God will come in. Mm. He was lying because it wasn't the God of the Bible. It was the God of this world, which is Satan. And he was, he found the song and the snake that I was watching the whole time, because I was looking to see if anybody else saw it, but it was just me the snake started speaking like at a real fast rate. It started going like this, like real fast, real fast. And he looked like he was possessed, like I was when I was dancing. And he started mumbling and he went in the studio and he did the song after that happened. And he said, I don't know what y'all call it, man. I call it my magic moment. And I was about to cry and go crazy because what was happening to me at that time was I was realizing that Satan is real. And I was realizing that I'm on the wrong side. I'm on the wrong side. I, I felt this dread, this fear, this weight of, of my condition. If I was to die right now, where I would go? And it was not heaven. And it was not, it was a horrible feeling. But I'm still at the mercy of this marijuana and at the time I, I i catch the ride with my friends so when they're ready to go i gotta go you know i'm not gonna be able to go until they're ready and so i'm still there and i'm watching him in, engage with all the people throughout the whole fade to black um, documentary and he goes and he's doing this performance and he's doing this performance with masses of people and he's telling them to throw their hands up and he He had Mary J. Blige come out there and the way Mary J. Blige sang to Jay-Z was like she was worshiping a God. Mm. It was like she was worshiping God. It was. It sounded like like when you're in the choir and you have a solo and you sing him to God, but it was to a man and it, it, was, it was to this, it was to Jay-Z and I was understanding because we idolized Jay-Z growing up. In my time, we, we idolized him and, and you don't realize what that word means. You literally put him on a pedestal that you worship him and then he said, throwing your hand throw your hands up and everybody would just throw their hands up and so i'm trying to get out of this room that's that's my goal at the time i'm watching the dvd but i want to get away from it as far as possible but i can't 
And so I get as close to the door, the exit. I get as close as I can. And he said, everybody get your hands up. And I felt this force come under my hands and try to lift my hands up. And something inside of me snapped. And I went like, no, it's only one God. And I was like, wait, why did I just say that? And when I looked to my left, all of my friends had their hands up. They looked like zombies. It was the most frightening thing you ever want to see. Everybody's face was pale. It was a whole bunch of weed smoke. But in the midst of that weed. Yo, it's giving me the chills right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is straight up giving me the chills right now. I don't know why I feel like I'm in the moment as he's explaining it. Oh my goodness. Weed smoke. I saw other spirits there. I saw that we weren't alone. I saw that. Man, they were leading us to hell. And I'm trying not to get choked up now because it was so, so real. I cannot explain to you that the spirit realm is more real than the natural realm. And I saw that and I was like, okay, I, I gotta go home. I gotta get home. And that was the only thing that was keeping me from like breaking. It was like, I had to use all my strength. It was the grace of God. I had to use all my strength not to just snap and just break down and just lose it because I was about to lose my mind. And so we finally get ready to go. The album is finally done. I even saw Kanye West. I saw Kanye West on the album, how he looked how, on the DVD, how he looked up to Jay-Z, how he came out with this song called Lucifer Son of the Morning. That was, it was on the documentary. I'm trying to leave and I just keep seeing things that are confirming how real Satan is. And it was, and, and Jay-Z went and he was rapping and he quoted a scripture from the Bible and he came outside and scratched his head. And he said, word to my mother, I never read the Bible in my life. And I understood that Satan knows the word of God. Mm. He tempted Jesus with the word of God. I understood that he used to be an angel in heaven and that he fell. I understood that he could possess somebody and that they could potentially speak something that they didn't learn themselves because they're being possessed by a spirit that knows everything that's going through their mouth. And he said, I wet y'all all with the holy water. And when I perish, the meek shall inherit the earth until that time is on and popping mm. church. I understood that he meant that he, the devil knows he's going to perish. But until that time, I'm going to get as many people to go to hell as possible. It's on and popping church. Everything he was saying, I understood the spiritual consequences and the ramifications behind it. I knew that this was not a game, that these songs, these rap artists, these people that do these songs under the influence of the devil are waging war against the saints of God, against humanity. He already has humanity entrenched um, in sin and, and bondage by the spirit of disobedience. And they're already by nature children of wrath. So he already has them. He's waging war against the people that are already believers and the people that potentially could become believers. So he wants to keep you bound. So he wages war through music, through temptations, through things that will keep you doing what will get you to hell. And so I also understood because I felt it, the intense hatred that they have for humanity. The way the devil feels about you is beyond comprehension. He hates you so much that he want you he wants you to go to hell. He wants you to burn in eternity in hell. You have done nothing to him, but he hates you. He is our enemy, our arch enemy, the first person that was created by God. He deceived. He had them fall. The first two, he had them fall. He couldn't get to Adam directly, so he went through his wife and they got to Adam and they both fell. God saved us with great difficulty. It was the reason why Jesus says it's only one way to get to heaven is because there was only one way to redeem us. It was with great difficulty that he saved humanity. What the devil really did to us, what the devil really waged war against us is beyond what you what we can understand. And I was getting this download like of understanding the war that he is waging against us straight from the pits of hell. And he's got agents. He's got rappers. He's got singers. He's got he's got scientists. He's got all these people. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I'm just letting people know that if you if you watch this and you think that you know, you try to water it down or downplay it, 
I'm I'm trying to tell you that it's 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 it's, it's realer than what you than what you know. It's realer than what you can understand unless you get this revelation from God. And God can give you this revelation if you ask him. And so, all right, um, I had to I had to change the, the scene. I, I had a call that interfered with my my story. So resuming where I left off, I finally was getting ready to to leave with my friends. And they stayed in a almost like a similar set up to a dorm except they had apartments so there was a hallway there was some steps and in the hallway there was different doors that led to different apartments but i remember distinctly leaving out after everybody i think i went to the bathroom to put some water on my face and honestly to try to sober up and we walked out and i heard them talking amongst themselves in front of me like man she added again there she go again and i was wondering what they were talking about and the thing was when they opened the door, there was so much weed smoke that came out of the door that you knew that whoever was neighbors to them were, were catching a lot of weed smoke secondhand. Smelling it, the vapors, the smoke, there was definitely a residual effect that was just out in the hallway when we just opened the door. But we were walking and we're all still high and I'm like the last person and I'm walking and I see this light on this door and it is like, like a light was shining down from heaven on this door. And when I got to the door of this particular apartment, there was this girl behind the door and she was singing her heart out to God. I don't know if it was, well, I know what it was, but it sounded so good. It sounded like it was a recorded album. And I knew it was a real person because they were saying, she doing it again. Like I think she sang before, but I felt, God's spirit drawing me to not before I could the same way I felt something come under my hands to try and lift my hands up and I said no I felt God's spirit drawing me to knock on the door and I was about to knock on the door I was about to knock on the door and right when my hand was about to make contact with the wood one of my friends yelled out like it was Satan trying to reel me back in and he yelled it with like an anger he was like Miles you coming and it snapped me out of it and I started walking back with them and I looked at the door and I just kept walking. So I was getting ready to go downstairs with all my friends and we're all dead silent because we're all high and everybody's in their own world. But we're going down the steps and the steps is like, it's like two or three flights and the lights weren't working. So it started off light and it got dimmer as it went down and there was one light and it was a red exit sign. So it looked like you were entering into this dark red place just going down. And it looked like you were getting ready to go down to hell. Now, I thought this in my mind. And out of the blue, one of my friends, he just yelled out. He was like, we on our way to hell, y'all. And everybody bust out laughing. Everybody just, they thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And I knew I had just thought that. And... It just made me want to break down and cry because that's the truth. I, I knew that we were on our way to hell. And it was like I was meeting people because in college, I'm meeting new people all the time. But it was like we would smoke and it felt like we were on our way to hell and we were meeting people on our way to hell. Mm. And so I knew these people, but I didn't know them like that well. And so we get in the car and, and I didn't want to hear no Jay-Z, but that's all we listened to. It was like the very thing that... I liked on the other side, seeing if it really, what it really was, it was torment to, to hear it again, but that's all we listened to. So as soon as we got into the car, it was Jay-Z on the CD and it was so bad that it came on. I was like, I, I don't want to hear no more, but the CD started skipping. And when the CD started skipping, the words that were skipping were making sentences talking to me, bro. I cannot remember everything it was saying, but it was, I was trying to block it out. I put it like that, but it was skipping and it was, it was like, it was demonic. It was demonic. It was demonic activity. It was spiritual forces, spiritual wickedness. And you could, you could feel it. It was tangible. And I was, I was done. I had been done hours ago. Finally get to my, what felt like an attorney. We finally get to our dorm rooms. And my roommate, his name was Jody. He was, he was, his, it was actually his friends that I was introduced to. And that's the place that we went to. 
He got into a room, I got into the room and I just got a black trash bag and I just started dumping my clothes in there and I was getting ready to go. I dumped my clothes in there and before Jody had walked into the room, I had got on the phone with my mom and I couldn't say anything to her. And it was probably about two or three o'clock in the morning. And I called because I wanted to go home. And it rang like three times. And the conversation went just like this. And this is my mom picking up. She grabbed it. She said, hello? Hello? Miles? And all I could say was the most, the only strength I could muster was a broken ma. I just said, ma? She said, you want me to come get you? I'm on my way. And she hung up the phone. And that was the conversation. Her and my dad both came, drove up to, to, the, to the college. They both came in different cars, but they both drove up like they were ready for whatever I was going to tell them. I got in the car with my mom, and I told her the story I'm telling you. And I finally, at that moment, I just let it go. I looked at my mom, and I said, Mom, am I going crazy? And I just broke down. I just, I just broke down. And, I, and my mom looked at me and she said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And when she said that, it was like I was gasping for air and she gave me air with the word of God. It was like, and I was like, is that what God said? For the first time in my adult life, I wanted to know what God said. And I said, is that what God said? I said, I've been listening to the devil this whole time. Is that what God said? And that little snippet, kept my sanity because I was about to lose it. And it, it it carried over until church that Sunday. I went to church and I still had to hold my composure because I wanted to go to the altar. And I, I can't remember the service. I can't remember what, what they sang, what they preached. All I remember is the altar call. I just remember the altar call. And he invited somebody if they were backslidden or if you want to give your life to Christ, walk up. I walked up and I was holding it together and they took us to the back. And I'm so glad they, they did, but they took us to the back and I just started crying. I just started crying. I just, I just broke down. And that was my prayer. My prayer was in my heart. I just cried. And the, and the minister who was there, his name was Elder Charlie. And he just prayed for me. And the prayer that he said was what my heart was saying. And he was putting words to what my heart was saying. And as I was crying, I felt this weight that was on my back like it had wings, it just lifted off my back. It just lifted off my back and I physically felt forgiven. I felt forgiven. And then I had like a download of just the reality that Jesus Christ is the truth, the way and the life. And that's the only way to get to heaven. This is real. The Bible is real. The church of God is real. I, I understood it all. It was like he just he just he gave me just the download. And then I knew that I was that that he had a calling for me to go into into ministry. And I just had a hunger for God. And I just wanted to share my testimony of how that happened for me. Because it's real. It's real. And if this touch is just one life, if it was just one life, it was worth it for me to get online and share this with you. And I want to say thank you again to everybody who has shared their stories of what has happened that has led them to Christ. Because God, God said in his word that we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Oh, God is good. He's good. And I want, I want you all to be encouraged. I want you all to be encouraged and know that God he he went through great difficulty for you to have the opportunity to be saved. There was only one way for him to do it. And if you feel this message resonate in your heart, I would like to give you the opportunity that I, I didn't know that wasn't given to me. God can save you in the way that's unique for you. I had no sinner's prayer. It was my heart. And that's what he wants. He wants your heart. He wants your heart to repent and to turn to him, to turn away from the enemy and turn to the one who loves your soul 
The one who loves you so much that he died a brutal, horrible death on the cross. His blood was shed so that we can obtain heaven. He became our sin, our mistakes, our faults, so that we could become his righteousness, his holiness, and have right standing with God. God is so good. He's so just. He's so holy that he knew I can't deviate from judgment. But if I can give my judgment to myself in turn to redeem them, they can have access to me again and I can have access to them again because I love them so. That's the best story in the world. Mm. There's no greater, no greater love than that. I pray that this touches your soul, that this mm. touches your heart, and that you should. Man. <clears throat> wow. I, I don't know if y'all was getting like chills as you were watching it, but as I was listening to him, you know, explain the testimony and everything, literally was getting chills down my, like, in my body. Like, and you know, it reminds me of me and my friend, we used to smoke. And it was like every time we smoked, we just wanted God. Every time we smoked, we just wanted God. Now, yes, we would do other things as well, but it would always come back to us just wanting God. Like we would smoke, I don't know, we're playing video games or something. We would smoke, we're playing foosball. Or we, we would smoke, we're, we're doing something. And it always came back to God until one day, you know, we were smoking and we were both just like, you know, every time we smoke, we just talk about God. How about we just stop smoking? We don't need to smoke in order to feel closer to God or, or whatever, like, if the conversation is always going to come back to God when we're high and if, if we're just going to feel shame and, and bad and guilt and just end up putting on worship music anyway. I mean, this is the craziest thing. We would literally smoke and like every time we would just end up putting on worship music because we just wanted to worship. We just wanted to repent. We just wanted to go back to our father because we know we, we knew that we had screwed up, but we were in this cycle of pleasure in this cycle, just stuck in this cycle, just like how he was saying, just stuck in this cycle. And I know for me, that cycle of smoking lasted for a very long time. And it was like, I was just stuck in that cycle. And I was becoming more and more content with where I was at. And it was almost as like life was just passing me by. And my relationship with God was just on hold until one day I was like, you know what? This little temporary satisfaction that I'm getting, this little, you know, joint or whatever, it's not worth going to hell for. And I took everything that I had, you know, all the tree and, and whatnot, and I threw it in the trash. And haven't touched it since then. Incredible testimony, incredible story. Um, once again, I'll link, I'll link his testimony uh, down below for those of you who want to check it out or for those of you who want to follow him. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Get in my comments, subscribe if you have not already. Like this video. It really goes a long way uh, to support the channel just simply by liking the video. If you truly like the video, you know. Um, yeah. I'm out.